fashion industry broadcast and Style Planet TV are proud to bring you their new Netflix original series, The Girl's Guides to the World of Designer Fashion. This new six-part series explores the seductive world of designer fashion. Series one, the history of lingerie. Series two, the legend of the designer bag. Series three, the mystery of the high heel. Series four, American fashion. Series five, Italian fashion and series six, Paris fashion. Belgian-born designer Diane von Furstenberg has amassed a vast history of accolades over the course of her life. Furstenberg is famous for her line DVF and also the coining of the wrap dress in the 1970s. Furstenberg's mother was a prisoner at the infamous Auschwitz concentration camp. She herself stated that fear is never an option, an ethos that Diane has carried throughout her career. My mother, when she was 22, was, uh, she was living in occupied Belgium. She got arrested. She went to a concentration camp, the death camp, really. For 13 months, she survived. When she survived, she only weighed 49 pounds. So, but when she, even though she could barely move, they asked her to fill a piece of paper with her name her last name, her address, and they say, state of health. And she wrote, excellent health, even though she could move. So that's where I, I learned from her not to be a victim. So my mother inspired her, me, but all women inspire me. I mean, I, I'm always inspired by the strength of women. The designer is an established player who, among many others, has populated New York's fashion area for many decades now. Von Furstenberg boasts a multifaceted career of philanthropy and entrepreneurship, as well as being a renowned fashion designer. Von Furstenberg's educational background lies in the study of economics at the University of Geneva. At university, she met her soon-to-be husband, Prince Egon zu Furstenberg. The couple would quickly move to New York, and during this time, Furstenberg would undertake an apprenticeship under Ferretti, construct a wedding dress under Dior and undertake her first steps within a career in the fashion design industry. Her personal aristocratic success and status motivated her to expand into the world of fashion and become a force. And uh, me, well, I don't know. I, get my, I guess my great ambition was to be a free woman. And um, at that time, I came, I, I had to find some way somehow to become me and uh, at the time I always played with colors and I love colors and I love beauty I guess my vocation is really more on the beauty side and um, and uh, I just arrived in New York at a time in which I couldn't find what I would have liked for myself so that's how I got involved she didn't come in with an idea she came in with a package with a product with the whole thing worked out this was, she didn't leave it in our lap she wasn't just a person with a dream, with a flair, with great taste. She came in with the whole thing digested, fixed, arranged. She was passionately involved in success. Von Furstenberg's success was based on more than a trendy little dress. It was a counter-revolution. In a country addicted to pants, she gave women back their legs. Her slogan, feel like a woman and wear a dress, launched von Furstenberg and a new parlor game of counting her dresses at parties. You can have yellow, red, or I believe green. The scarf is... In the 7th Avenue showroom, the buyers responded to American women who decided they had to have a von Furstenberg creation. And $75 did not seem too much to pay for a touch of class. Diane von Furstenberg's wrap dress is one of the most iconic pieces of clothing of the entire 20th century. The wrap dress has surprised me. What I realized this year 
is what an impact it has had, not only fashion-wise over four decades, but socially. And of course, I had no idea that I, that would happen. It's a dress that hides, that has a small waist, that, and so we have so many different types. We have wide skirt, we have long dresses, we have rompers for young girls. Every time, it's the young girls who come, discover it, and bring their mothers back. You don't know why this dress makes you feel both sexy and empowered. Her ideals of effortlessness while maintaining style permeated the face of virtually every brand of its time. A narrative of innovation was within every practice of the business. The invention of the wraparound jersey dress popularised day wear and also disco attire. Moreover, the wrap dress became the sole dress that women would wear to work. It was feminine, it was functional, simple and elegant. The dress became a garment that was nothing even close to menswear. Bloomingdale's placed the first order and then there was a little wrap top with a skirt and that did very well and I thought maybe I should turn that little wrap top into a dress uh -huh. and that's what happened. Her design processes, references and the timeless nature of the dress had formulated a recipe for success. Construction techniques of this dress were extensive, complex and universal. And they were very simple and they were like nothing little clothes and they certainly didn't look like anything before they were worn. But when they were worn on a body, they took the shape of the body, the body language went with it and they just made perfect sense. Diane's silhouettes and design principles had formed not only a climax of hype in the 1970s, but a permanent piece in style history. Furstenberg has unequivocally communicated a philosophy of liberation and sexual freedom through the subversive and 1970s norm-breaking item of the wrap dress. The application of her morals and ideals is enough of a success in concept alone, let alone her commercial dynamo that her fashion house became. Diane von Furstenberg opened her own 7th Avenue showroom and introduced a slinky little dress that caused a fashion frenzy. Not only could it be worn to the office or on a casual day wear look for any girl on the block, but women on Park Avenue were wearing it as well. It became the standard from then on on how to dress American women. The success of Diane von Furstenberg's endeavors is correspondingly due to her accessibility of the clothing she produced. Her placement of the famous map stemmed from a dress for everybody. Classy, ready to wear for every occasion. I'm wearing Diane all the time. I'm wearing her clothes because for a woman, it's something, it's so easy to throw. Or... I am wearing Diane von Furstenberg. She's one of my favorite people, not designers, people. When you see a woman walking, you can immediately identify her as a DVF woman. I know she's beautiful, she's confident, the way she strides. By 1975, Furstenberg was making 15,000 dresses a week. A staggering figure, especially within that time period. Furstenberg had initiated such a universal and powerful summer trend. This dress flattered all figures, ages and demographics. Of people not just in America, but globally. She had sold millions of dresses by 1976 in an unequivocal retail phenomenon, breaking the workforce mandated trend of trousers. This breaking of norms would later translate to other forms of her achievement, for her and also those around her. Beyond her financial and design-laden success, Furstenberg cultivated its slogans and a new ethos that would translate well through her clothing and collections. This was my first pattern, which is called the Lynx pattern, the very first picture of me in that print, you see? I remember they run, the, the model canceled and the buyer said, we'll use you. And that was my first ad and I was 23 years old. I reissued this pattern and our first lady used it for her Christmas card. How about that? And basically this brand, DVF, is all about uh, giving women what they want and empowering them celebrating freedom and giving them confidence. I think that at the end, what we do with DVF is make women feel more confident because if you're more confident, you're more beautiful. Preceding a lengthy hiatus of operating a publishing house, Diane relaunched her label in the year 1997. Over a decade of absence had gifted von Furstenberg new insights as well as a fresh mind. This period had ultimately served as a time of rejuvenation for Diane. 
but of course, not, not everything goes right. Not everything, and what goes up must go down. After the huge success, I had, you know, everybody in America had one, two, three, five, ten, twenty wrap dresses, and so overnight, it sank, you know, it kind of sank, and I had to sell my business. Meanwhile, I had started a cosmetic business, and so my children grew up. They went to boarding school. I fall in love with a writer in Paris. I move to France, and I think fashion business is over for me. And I stay in Paris, and I do a publishing house for five years, and the love affair is not so great anymore. And my, I miss my children. I miss America. I come back to America. And there I had a really, really hard time because I realized that what I had done, my work, my brand, at, at the time you didn't even call it a brand. You, you didn't. Uh, uh, was my identity, and I had lost my identity. In the same breath, she formed DBF Studio a new space that greeted young creatives in their performances with a down-to-earth and inclusive setting. The space was ultimately an indicator of Furstenberg's honest and sincere independent style and outlook. Diane's legendary and crucial fixture in the industry in the 21st century was exemplified by her company's expansion into a vast range of collections of clothing, shoes and also accessories. In the early 2000s, the proof of her versatility within her legacy had expanded into styling figures such as Lady Gaga, the unveiling of unprecedented campaigns and even fragrances. Furstenberg's ability to reference the past was displayed in her 2012 runway, in which she paid clear homage to significant pieces of her work from the 20th century. Diane's fortune and legacy have clearly not blocked her introspection. She's recently exited being the president of the Council of Fashion Designers of America. Generating hundreds of millions of dollars in annual revenue, DBF is now sold in over 70 countries worldwide. Furstenberg has published many books, sits on the board of Vital Voices, an organization empowering women as leaders and entrepreneurs, and donates to many important causes through her own von Furstenberg Family Foundation. The most important relationship in life is the one you have with yourself. Once you have a good relationship with yourself, any other relationship is a plus and not a must. And that's a big difference. To some, 2014 marks the 40th anniversary of the wrap dress's inception. It is the 40th anniversary of my wrap dress. You know, I think the wrap dress is, is great for the every woman. I mean, short, tall, heavy, slim. You know, I think it's so flattering on so many different body types that I think that's why it's it's really stood the test of time. I think if a style of anything can be around for 40 years, I mean, I think that in and of itself is what makes it spectacular. And the fact that it's Diane is, makes everything that much better. Currently, the dress is featured in New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art Costume Institute, a worldwide exhibit titled Journey of a Dress. Showcase the legacy, power, and beauty of this particular dress. It was difficult to determine which of the dresses were original and which weren't. In this visual homage to the most significant piece of her work, both the famous guests attending the exhibition and the mannequins themselves were emblazoned in DBF. In the same year, DBF.com delved into the realm of the digital native, using influencers to create visual and written content surrounding their personal experiences. An interrelated webisode series also ensued. For me, I feel like I was doing social media before there was social media. Yeah. My husband teases me that I'm worse than my granddaughter. I am so happy that I am old enough to have danced at Studio 54, but young enough to be part of the digital revolution. 
The 1970s born power to address a large percentile of women had translated into an empowering back then. And now, a new empowering arrived with the digital age. With the mind of a true activist and advocate, she was granted women a new voice through her clothing within social media. Not only a respected historic member of the fashion community, von Furstenberg is moreover a social activist, boasting a sizable movement and platform. Diane has served on many boards, formed foundations, and donated a vast percentage of her earnings to worthy charitable causes. One of the things that I want to say to young girls who are at the beginning of their career, when you start, when you finish college, when you take your first job, or even later, you never know which is going to be your doors. There are so many doors out there, and, and it's not necessarily the most glamorous door who will end up giving, in my case, the, it certainly was not a glamorous door, and yet it gave me a very glamorous life. So it's very important to be very aware and very sensitive to every opportunity, and nothing is too small, nothing is, you should be curious, you should listen. I lived three, three moments of my career. I lived an American dream where everything went so fast, where I became successful so fast, and I couldn't follow, it went so fast. And then I sold my company, and I thought I was finished with fashion. I realized that my work was my identity, and I felt very bad about it, and it took me a long time to take it over again, and, and then I started again. Now there's the third moment, which is legacy. With my work and with my brand, it's not just about a little dress, but it's about a spirit. I celebrate freedom, I empower women, and I sell confidence. But it's the spirit around all of that that I would like to, I would like that to last after me. Shockingly, despite having stepped away from the design aspect of the brand, Eleven Honoré promised a collection in 2019 which saw an extended capsule of Diane's wrap dress. The wrap dress was the most demanded piece of clothing to be resold. This collaboration was welcomed by a colourful lunch and honoured guests. Not only was this collaboration a callback and a release of accessible glamour, it additionally served as a moment for Diane von Furstenberg to be intimate and promote confidence among other women within the event. They say, I made the dress but the dress made me. So this summer, well, I've been thinking very much, you know, okay, what kind of old woman am I going to be? <laughs> and uh, so one day I was doing a, an Arctic, a, a story with the Washington Post, with Robin, and uh, it was two years ago, and then, I don't know what happened to me, I just said to her, you know, I used to be an icon, now I want to become an oracle. Okay, before I know, the article came out, and this huge word, oracle, came out. So for a minute and a half, I was embarrassed. And then I thought, yeah, that's what I want to be. She wishes to pass on every lesson she has learned. Now embracing and accounting for her age, Furstenberg desires to pass on her legacy to her granddaughter. With nearly 50 years of industry experience under her belt, and over 15 million dresses sold, Diane now, in lieu of retrenchment, aims to remain independent and not fall victim to another creative director overseeing her company. Furstenberg still wants the brand to encompass her focus on work for women as her clothing line reflects her struggles of how you give life meaning. Be critical, be demanding, but also be good to you. Thank you.